In this video, I'm going to teach you all about microcontrollers, how they work, how you program them, and I'm going to give you loads of examples of cool projects you can make with them. Oh, that's great. The microcontrollers we use are called Genie Chips, and they come on a circuit board like this. That thing there is the microcontroller. You can get them in lots and lots of different sizes. We use the 14 pin one, so it's called a Genie 14. The Genie 14 that we use has got six outputs. So I've got a green LED connected to that one, a yellow LED connected to that one, a red LED connected to that one. We've not used this output here. That's a buzzer connected to that output, and I haven't used that output there. Also, you can have five inputs. Uh, as it happens on this one, I've just got one push to make switch connected to the first input, uh, but I've not used the others. But you also need to connect power to the circuit, so we use a battery snap in conjunction with three AAA batteries. Right, the great thing about microcontrollers is that you can program them to do lots of different things. And you do this by producing a flowchart on the computer. And you can transfer this flowchart into the microcontroller by using a special cable you plug into a jack socket. And all those instructions in the flowchart get sent down the cable in through the jack socket into the microcontroller where they get stored. And then you can unplug the cable because you don't need it anymore. Because as long as your circuit's got power, it'll work. Right, so let's have a go at producing a simple flowchart. Open up Circuit Wizard and click on the flowchart tab at the bottom. Then click on Program at the top, Program Settings, and make sure you've got the Genie 14 chip, which is also called the V2 Genie. On the right hand side, you'll also see a tab that's called Gallery. Click on that and it gives you quite a lot of different flowchart options. Once you drag an Outputs command box onto the page, double click in that, and you get the option to set all the outputs to zero, which means off. And then we're gonna add a wait command for one second after that. So the next thing I'm going to do is drag another outputs box on and double click in there. And this time I'm going to turn on the three outputs, zero, one, and two, uh, and also output number four, which is connected to the buzzer. And again, I'll add another time delay of one second at the bottom. And then I'll put on a feedback line, which will make those two command lines repeat. You can see when we download that program into the microcontroller, it turns on outputs 0, 1 and 2, which are the LEDs, and output 4, which is the buzzer, repeatedly. The program I downloaded just then is really, really simple, but microcontrollers are capable of doing much more complex tasks. Right, so have a go at building this one. Put an outputs box on, turn them all off or low with the zeros, and wait for one second. After that, drag another outputs box on. I've deliberately put it lower, but this time we're going to turn on just output zero, which on our board would be the green LED. We'll do that for one second. And then I'm going to drag another outputs box on, in which I'll change the status so that we turn the first output off but the second output on this time we'll do that for a second and then we'll turn that one off but then the third one on which i think is a red led we'll do that for a second and i'll just drag a line on there to join those two together and then from the bottom i'll need to draw a feedback line on which will take us right back to the top again as you can see, when we download that, it causes the LEDs just to cycle on and off one at a time in a loop. But this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify that flow chart and I'm going to put in uh, what's called the digital command. And what that does is it looks at the inputs. OK, so I'm double clicking on that box and it's going to look at input zero where I've connected my push switch to see whether that is on. Now, I'll drag the first line on, and that says yes. And what it'll do, it'll go down that path if the switch is pressed. In other words, if input one is on. 
but if it's not on it'll go round to the top again and it'll keep checking so it's only going to go through that sequence of turning the leds on once the button is pressed as shown there what we decided to do was build our own set of traffic lights so that students can have a walk program in that. I'll show you that in a second. And after that, I'll show you the amazing Year 9 robot project that we did with microcontrollers and servos. Okay, so here are the real traffic lights that we've got. So I'll just talk you through everything. At the very top there, you've got a cluster of five red LEDs. You've got then a cluster of five amber leds they do look very similar in color though those two and you've got five green leds as well you'll see that there's uh, a cable coming off that comes down through the pole and then you've got um the red man and the green man each of those has got an led behind it so that the right one can be lit up at the right time at the very bottom you'll see the wires that come down from those leds into our circuit board they're all kind of soldered on there uh, nicely that is the genie chip that is the download cable that you can plug your your cable into into that jack and then you've got um a button there that will sound when you're able to cross the road so as you can see uh the green light's on and the red man is on so let's press the button to start the crossing sequence hopefully you'll see when i press that that in a second the green light turns to amber then the amber light turns to red then you will see the green man come on and the button so it's now safe to cross Amber and green man flash. And then the green traffic light and the red man are back on again. And then it's back to the top of the flow chart waiting for you to press the button once more. Right, for year nine, we thought we'd have a go at making little robots. So we've built these. Uh, they're operated with two servos, these blue things here, and they cause the back legs and the front legs to move. And they're controlled by one of our Genie microcontrollers. The servo consists of a little electric motor inside there and some gears and these cause this arm on the top to move and it's controlled by these wires because the microcontroller sends pulses down one of these wires and basically tells the servo where to move and how quickly to move there. And the way that we built these is we've connected the rear legs to output Q2 and we've connected the front legs to output Q3 on the Genie chip. Right, so to program servos, you first of all have to scroll down and you find the command that's called motor. So drag that over underneath where it says start there. And then double click in that box and you have to tell it that you want to do a servo motor and the signal we're going to set to Q2 because that's where the back legs are connected. Now, the position, um, we're going to put 150 in because 150 is the centre. The centre position starts off with. And we'll do the same again for the front legs, which are connected to Q3. So, double-click on that box, change it to servo, signal Q3 this time, and also set that one to 150. You can just type the numbers in. So we initially set both the rear legs and the front legs to 150, which is the center position, just so that we can check that our legs are in fact centered. Next, we're just gonna put a wait command in, just of 0.05 of a second. And then I'm going to select the two servo lines, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, because we just need to change the values now. So we're gonna change them, instead of being 150, I'm going to put it down to 120, which is where I'm going to move the back leg to. And also I'll do the same with the front leg as well. Then I'll copy and paste them to again, along with the weight command. And instead of it being 120 now, I'll go 30 the other way, so I'll make them 180 each. to do is put a feedback line on and send it back up to the top so that they'll carry on walking and that process will repeat itself 
and we'll just download that into the microcontroller and have a look to see how that robot works. Hmm, it looks like it's jumping about more than walking. The reason that the legs are vibrating more than moving is because they're moving too quickly. So I'm going to double click in the servo boxes again and you'll see that I'm going to put a time in for how long it takes to make one complete movement. And if the bigger that number, basically, the longer it will take to move, so the slower it will be. And this will slow the legs down and enable them to move properly. So just done that on all four of the servo boxes. So we'll download that and have a look at it now. And that seems a little bit better, more controlled, and it's definitely moving. So in addition to changing the speed at which the legs move, we can also shorten the distance that the legs move. And we do that by changing the position as shown here. So instead of being 30 either side of the center position of 150, we've just made them 10 either side. So in other words, 140 and 160. So they're doing shorter strides, but more of them. We don't know whether that will be faster than longer strides. Right, so I'll give each year nine a robot and access to Circuit Wizard to do the programming, get them to dress it up and make a costume, and then get them to test the stride length and the stride speed to see which is fastest, and then let them have a race. This is the grand final from last time we did it. Two, one, go! Oh no! Oh, no. And we're in the process of making a machine that launches table tennis balls and we use a microcontroller and servo for part of that. Not for this bit that drops the table tennis balls down, but for this system here that uses a microcontroller and a servo to randomly vary the angle that the table tennis ball is launched at. And this last system that you can see is the fast moving wheel that launches the balls. So there you go. Microcontrollers are a fantastic way of getting your projects and your products to do a wide variety of things. And they're actually a lot easier to program and a lot easier to use than some people think. And they're everywhere. Just think about the cycle of a washing machine, really sophisticated. That's controlled by a microcontroller just in the same way that you would program a robot or program some traffic lights. Hope you've enjoyed watching and look at the outtakes for something that went wrong when we were developing these robots a few weeks ago. Bye. We need to give it a name, Andy. What's, what's wrong? Oh, he's falling over. Great <laughs> <laughs>